Howdy y'all, it's Chris with Shell Fitness. Today in class we went over the planes of motion. So Skelly, my butt buckle, and I are going to help you better understand the planes of motion. We got three of them. We got sagittal, transverse, and frontal. So starting with the most basic, sagittal, we're sagittal creatures. That's going to be any time that Skelly and I flex and extend in the anatomical position. Supination, anatomical. So any joint that's going to flex or extend will be sagittal. So if you were to lift his leg up, femur is in the plane of motion of sagittal because it's the femur is flexing. Flexion, extension. For the humerus, flexion, extension. The elbow, flexion, extension. The knee, flexion, extension. Any time we flex or extend, we are in the sagittal plane. So if you were to imagine I'm in a clock right now, <coughs> excuse me, 12 o'clock would be right ahead of me. Behind me would be six. Anytime my joints touch those during an exercise, it's going to be primarily sagittal plane motion. So let's look at a bicep curl. Curling straight up, I'm flexing, but look at where my hands are going through. Twelve. If I were to do a reverse lunge, my foot goes back to six. Coming down, my joints are in the sagittal plane motion. Again, anytime we flex or extend sagittal plane motion. Now the definition in, the, in your textbook is kind of confusing. It talks about bisecting the body and do front and, hat or front and back, anterior, superior. Go off of flexion and extension. It's the best way to understand planes of motion for sagittal. So then we have lateral, which is going to be AB and A deduction. So anytime Skelly brings this humerus out, like a lateral raise, that's going to be abducting, which is in the frontal plane of motion. Anytime Skelly brings out his femur to the side, like doing jumping jacks, that's going to be abduction, which is in the frontal plane of motion. Jumping jacks are a perfect example because my legs and my hips are abducting. Now when you look at the clock analogy, to my left I have nine, to my right I have three. So anytime the human body goes through and touches those times, it's going to be frontal. Side step, lateral raise, bicep curls here, lat pull down, pull ups, those will be all frontal because the, the humerus would be a deducting, which is coming back to the midline. I'm pulling up a deduction, frontal plane motion. Last but not least is transverse. The clock analogy, it's any other time besides 12 and 6, which is sagittal, left and right, 9 and 3, which is frontal, and then we have any other time, transverse. So 1, 10, transverse. If you were to do a bicep curl like this, that would be transverse. Chest flies, I think, are probably the best example. The humerus would be horizontally adducting. If the leg were to come in, it's transverse. Sumo squat, look at those knees tracking through your toes. Transverse. Now, the thing with transverse, <clears throat> where this, these are where most injuries happen. They occur due to the lack of stability and strength in the frontal as well as transverse. So then when we move into it, we hurt ourselves. Basketball player up here can't stabilize in the frontal plane, so the knee comes into the transverse plane, you pull out your knee. So the take home from this, a lot of our movements are primarily sagittal based. Squats, lunges, step ups, leg press, leg curls, leg extensions, curls, extensions, close grip bench press, rows. Muscles and joints don't just do one thing, they do a bunch. So try to do exercise that are multi-planar. So <clears throat> what we mean by that is don't just do one plane, do two planes. So then your brain has to work more and you're also going to get out of your comfort zone because again, most people are sagittal. So don't just squat, start doing pistols because you have to stabilize in a frontal plane when you go through sagittal. When you squat, we're more comfortable with this so that you don't have to stabilize as much in the frontal plane. Again, sagittal creatures, we primarily work 12 to 6. I challenge you to take each muscle group that you train and get them into all three planes of motion. So what I mean by that is on a leg day or a, a squat day, sagittal plane. We'll do a sumo, one set. Now we got transverse and then do a side lunge where you're going to get frontal but also sagittal. On a chest day, bench press,
primarily if you do close grip, it's going to be sagittal. If you go a little wider, it's going to be sagittal and transverse. But how about doing some chest flies, which will be transverse, and then maybe doing some flies down here, which will be front. So when you hit all three planes, you're hitting the muscle to a better degree. Let's just finish off the main muscle groups. So we have the lats, pull-ups, lat pull-downs, close grip row for sagittal, and then a wide row for transverse. For the shoulders, military press, frontal, do some front raises for sagittal or close grip. I like the split stance, sagittal. And then you could do Arnold's for all three. Challenge yourself to get out of just one plane. Injuries primarily happen in the transverse. So get into all three and protect yourself. Skelly and I, hey, 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 hey. There you go, look at the camera. Skelly and I finishing up on planes of motion. There you go.